Welcome to Bloomberg Law. I'm Lee Pacquia. Illegal downloading of copyrighted material cost the U.S. economy an estimated $16 billion in lost revenue. That's according to movie and music companies. To address this problem, they have agreed with Internet service providers to a new approach to crack down on online copyright infringers. Joining me now to discuss the new enforcement plan is Wendy Seltzer. She is a fellow with Princeton University's Center for Information Technology Policy. Welcome. Thanks, Thanks so much for coming in. Good to be with you. Last month, content providers met with uh, various ISPs, AT&T, Verizon, and Comcast, Time Warner, to announce this new plan to curb digital piracy. What's in this plan? Well, it's essentially a plan by the ISPs and the big entertainment industries to crack down on what users can do with their internet connections. Mm. ISPs have agreed to send a series of warnings uh, popularly known as six strikes right. uh, to their users and at the end to degrade their internet connections or cut them off if they've been accused of, uh, of infringing copyright. The term warning jumped out at me. Do they get six identical warnings or are they different every time? Oh, they, they, they get a series. Right. They, first they get different the educational or... <laughs> warnings that uh, remind them what copyright is and direct them to uh, perhaps some resources on educating themselves about uh, copyright law. Uh, then they get some acknowledgement warnings where they're asked to come back and click to agree or uh, let their service providers know uh, that they've seen this. And then they get the so-called mitigation measures. All of this is very Orwellian uh, sure. terminology. Sure. Uh, the mitigation measures might be slowing your internet speed so it's just barely better than dial up. Right. Uh, or limiting you to a subset of sites. So you've purchased high-speed internet access and suddenly because your ISP is uh, getting some warnings, you're told you can't access what you've paid for anymore. So I guess let's use a video game analogy. What happens when you make it to the sixth and final level? Um, then you're dealing with a, a, a creeping slow internet connection. Really? Maybe you can, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they actually affect yeah, that, your service. Yes. Huh. Uh, they're told um, to drop, uh, drop their customers down to uh, the, the lowest tier that above dial-up huh. that they offer. What, one notion behind this plan uh, seems to come along the lines that internet users, consumers, they need to be educated. Do you agree with that that assertion? I uh, agree that a lot of people probably don't know what the copyright law is. Um, but I don't think they need to be educated, and I don't think they need to be educated by a coalition of uh, the entertainment industry and Internet service providers, many of whom are now teaming with the entertainment industry or even sort of under co-ownership, um, because... You know, people do a lot more with their internet connections than just exchange copyrighted material. They create. Right. They're copyright owners, too. Right. So the net effect of this enforcement regime is a shutoff from ISP access. Is that correct? And if it is, what prevents the consumer from simply moving to a new ISP? I mean, they'll just go to another business outlet, right? Well, I think this is a boon to the independent ISPs who aren't members of this coalition, uh, the speakeasies and... Uh, other uh, providers, of course, there are very few of them available to, to most consumers, and that's part of the reason that this is so troubling. There really isn't a lot of competition huh. uh, in our ISP market. You might have access to one cable provider, and if you're lucky, a DSL provider, um, maybe some slower speed satellite. This seems like such a departure from uh, the, the, the uh, lawsuits of days of yore, where content providers would simply go out and file a lawsuit against a copyright infringer. What happened to that whole initiative? We used to hear stories about grandmothers being sued for hundreds of thousands of dollars for downloading nursery rhymes over Napster. I think that the entertainment companies, while they were making money off those lawsuits, they found it wasn't working to you know, stop file sharing, and it wasn't endearing them to their fans. Mm -hmm. they're, they're trying to sell products to, to these customers um, on the one hand and uh, suing them on the other. This is you know, a way to deflect some of the attention. Now it's your ISP who's cutting you off. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that that's you know, right for the end user. It seems that there's a, a difficulty in, in terms of keeping up with the way technology works copyright infringement used to work on a model under 
which infringers would engage in peer-to-peer -peer networks uh, to illegally acquire material. Now they use streaming services or one-click services. Is this regime adaptable to the point where it's going to be able to account for whatever comes next? Um, at the moment, I think uh, not. I think it's mostly uh, warnings to uh, subscribers about particular acts of alleged infringement. Uh, a lot of the language seems geared toward peer-to-peer. -to -peer. Uh, so you're right that the industry uh, and the entertainment industry seems perpetually a few years behind mm. uh, and, and users and um, they, they also seem behind innovation. I don't think they've picked up on all of the different ways that they could be making money uh, using new technology because of course the internet is giving them new ways to distribute their products too. And um, study after study shows that the people who engage in file sharing and unauthorized access to music and entertainment content also pay more money uh, for access to the authorized version. So if there are more uh, authorized streaming sites, more authorized purchase sites, mm -hmm. uh, all of those are going to attract customers and they're going to attract paying customers. We were talking before, uh, you had a really interesting and brilliant observation that the line uh, between content providers and service providers is blurring. Could you explain why and how that's, that's coming to be now? Uh, sure, I think it, it's industry conglomeration. Uh, Comcast, NBC, Universal uh, is just the latest example of that. So, uh, Comcast uh, used to offer straight up carriage, and NBC, Universal offered the content. As the two of them merge, uh, they have incentives to steer people toward the uh, the NBC right. Universal content and away from the user generated content, away from all right. of the other things that are competing for customers' attention. Right. And this warning system really tends to blur the line between those two camps. What, if any, are the ramifications of uh, ISPs kind of bridging that gap, engaging in this system? I think it's a disturbing blurring of the line between content and carriage. Mm. That carriage uh, should be. Sort of anyone, anything goes, anyone can put their own content over it, a neutral layer, uh, like the telephone lines uh, where nobody's listening in to tell me what sorts of phone calls I can make and uh, with whom I can carry on a conversation. And, and that sort of neutrality offers real possibilities for end users to find new things to do, to start blogging, to start up in these uh, micro-blogging services like Twitter, to join social networks, to generate their own sorts of material, as well as to use the connection for uh, downloading commercial videos, streaming commercial videos, watching YouTube and watching the amateur video content there. Mm. Uh, but it's sort of a wealth of possibility and uh, d programs like this that cause the internet service providers to sort of watch their users' connections, to steer them toward mm, uh, particular uses, threaten a lot of that. Do you think we're going to see further action from Congress on this issue? I think we should. Uh, I think we should be watching this program carefully and particularly watching its impacts on expression that's completely outside of the realm of copyright infringement. The internet is a medium for free expression in the social, political spheres. I, just the other day when President Obama was talking to people about the debt crisis, he told them to tweet their Congress people. Right. Um, so we're not just using... the first time I've seen anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So we're not just using the internet to watch uh, entertainment, we're using it to hold political discussions and if ISPs and entertainment and can uh, censor that connection, uh, it can have ramifications well beyond the, the entertainment context. Wendy Seltzer, thank you so much for coming in today. Thanks. It's been a pleasure talking with you. That's Wendy Seltzer. She is a fellow at Princeton University's Center for Information Technology Policy. If you'd like to learn more about the issue we just discussed, go check out both Bloomberg Law's Intellectual Property Law Report and Technology Law Report. They're available on BloombergLaw.com and also on the Bloomberg Terminal. I'm Lee Pacquia. Thanks for watching.